What you're seeing on screen right now is actually running at a native 1440p high settings with no FSR on the all new AMD Ryzen Z2 Extreme APU. And I was able to do this because I'm taking the Z2 Extreme to the limit. I'm up in the TDP as much as we can, kind of a dock mode situation, and we're gonna see exactly what this chip can do. At lower TDPs, when you compare it to something like the Z1 Extreme, I'd say performance isn't as good as I thought it would be coming out of the box. It's still a bit early, so it will improve over time, but I wanna see what we can get out of this thing in kind of a dock mode situation. And in order to reach these kind of TDPs on the new MSI Claw A8, I did have to add a little extra cooling. We'll go over that in just a bit. But before we get started here, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. On October 14th of 2025, Microsoft is going to be ending support for Windows 10. So this is a perfect time to pick up a Windows 11 Pro key from URCD Key. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. The Claw A8 with the Ryzen Z2 Extreme here has a boost up to 48 watts, but that's only for a few seconds. We've basically got a sustained TDP of 35. And as you can see, this is a smaller cooling system. I mean, it's not meant to go up this high. So I needed to find a way to cool it down at that 60 watt TDP. And my solution was actually pretty easy. I've got a flat aluminum heat sink here that just happens to clear the two fans and this isn't going to do it. So we need a little something else. I'm going to be using a thermoelectric cooler. So I picked this up. I actually got two of these a while ago on Amazon. They're good up to like a 35 watt TDP. Basically you add some power, one side gets hot, other side gets cold, also known as a Peltier cooler. And it actually works pretty well here. And I'm not just going to be setting it on here, bare metal to bare metal. I've got some thermal conductive tape that I've used, and this is not going to be perfect, but we're not going to hit thermal throttle at that 60 watt TDP either. Getting in here to check everything out. As you can see, AMD Ryzen Z2 Extreme. We've got those eight core 16 threads here and that Radeon 890mi GPU. This is that 16 compute unit iGPU. And from MSI Center M, we can really only get a sustained TDP of up to 35 watts. There is a boost up to 48, but that's only for a couple minutes. So what I'm using here is a third party application known as x86 Tuning Utility. From here, you can set up different profiles and I've taken it up to a 65 watt TDP, but this maxes out at 60 watts. So I'll show you from CPU Z, just run that stress test and right down here, up to 59 to 60 and even if I put a load on the GPU it's just going to be right there at 60. So it is limited in some way but we're pushing a lot more into this chip than it was really intended for and hopefully it does kind of pay off because like I mentioned the performance that I've been seeing out of the Z2 Extreme is a little underwhelming at least at the time I'm making this video. I mean when you compare it to something like the Z1 Extreme it's been on the market for a while. Uh, a lot of people have kind of had their hands on it. Power profiles have been tweaked by different companies but I'm just wondering if we can get the clocks up on the CPU here and that iGPU if it's really going to help out in the long run. The first thing I did here was run Geekbench 6 just to check out that CPU performance. And at the top, we're at a 60 watt TDP. Single core and multi are looking pretty decent here. And comparing it to a 35 watt TDP from Center M, we've got a nice gain on single core, but a multi core really does kind of make up for it. We're up to 13,820 as opposed to that 11,163. Another one I ran was 3D Mark Time Spy. At the top, we're at 60 watts. We got a 4,053. At the bottom, 35, up to 3,495. And I'll tell you, even with Center M maxed out with that 48 watt boost I was talking about, I can almost reach the score that we hit here at 60 watts with that enabled. So uh, I know that this chip was designed from the ground up for handhelds or low power consumption, but I was kind of expecting a little more taking that TDP up because the clocks on the CPU and GPU are much higher than they are at, let's say, 35 or even 48 watts. 
Okay, jumping right in here with Cyberpunk 2077. Got Afterburner up in the top left hand corner. You can see we're right there at that 59 to 60 watt TDP. Zen 5 and Zen 5C core clocks look really good here, but that uh, iGPU does seem a bit low. This will do up to 2900 megahertz, and this is something that I've kind of noticed on the Z2 Extreme. And in some cases, it just doesn't need to clock up that high. But I think with a game like this, it could benefit a bit. Either way, right now, we're at high settings. So we've got that high preset. FSR is set to quality with that preset. 1080p. And we're not quite at 60. I didn't suspect it would get up to 60 like this uh, with that high setting at 1080. Dropping it down to 900 will net us a little more out of it. But still, we're a bit limited on this iGPU. So I do think going down to medium with uh, maybe FSR set to balanced would be the way to go. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll go to that medium preset. Balanced. And it's right there on the edge. So yeah, I thought we'd get kind of close with it. Either way, I mean, it still feels really smooth. I'm on a uh, variable refresh rate display right now. Most new monitors do support free sync, so this could actually be a pretty smooth experience like it is here. But there's a way we can get more out of this and make it look a little better. We can go back up to those high settings, keep it at 1080, but we can add a little bit of FSR frame gen. So let's do that. We're going to go to high, FSR 3.1 frame generation, and unfortunately I do have to restart the game for this to work. And here it is, FSR frame gen on, high 1080p, still at that 60 watt TDP right there. I knew we were going to see really good performance of this chip with some frame gen and that higher wattage. If we were to take this down to 25 watts, we only see an average of around 71. So we are getting a nice gain, but would be nice to get a bit more, you know, going up to this kind of wattage on the Z2 Extreme. And I know there are people out there that just absolutely hate frame gen, but when you're working with an iGPU and it turns out to work this well, I personally don't see any reason not to use it. I wouldn't want to go into a multiplayer game with frame gen on, but for single player games, I mean, this is great and it looks awesome on this big display. The next game we have here is Forza Horizon 5 and I know it's an easier one to run. That's why I've actually taken it up to 1440p high settings. So from our settings here, we'll go to video, 1440, high preset, and this runs absolutely amazingly. This is pretty crazy, actually. And I kind of wish it wasn't getting dark here, but uh, either way, I mean, you can see the kind of performance we're getting out of this thing. Clocks on that CPU look great with those C cores and regular cores right there at that 60 watts. And I actually haven't seen a dip under 100 FPS here. This is pretty crazy. Oh, there we go. So a little under, but I mean, on average, we're over a hundred with it and it looks great at these settings. Originally, I went into this at medium settings and then realized, hey, we got a lot more that we can get out of this. So I just took it right up to high and it works really good on this system. Taking that TDP up on the Z2 Extreme doesn't seem to help out a game like Marvel Rivals very much. Right now we're at 1080 medium with FSR set to performance. That's the only way you can get it up to 60. And even then when we're in battle, you'll see dips on under. Taking the resolution down would really help out. But if I'm running this in let's say dock mode in 60 watt TDP, I really wanna be playing at at least 1080p. And unfortunately with something like this without frame gen on, just kind of falls on its face. I also wanted to test out at least one fighting game, so here's Mortal Kombat 1. We're at 1080 medium with FSR set to balance, and it'll run at 60 all day like this.
Spider-Man 2 1080 medium settings with FSR set to balanced. We're getting a much higher frame rate than we were at, let's say, a 25 watt TDP. At 25 watts, I usually just turn on frame gen because it's almost unplayable. So what I'm going to do now is just check it out with a little bit of frame gen just to see if we can get over that 60 mark. So 1080, FSR 3.1 set to balanced. Enable FSR frame generation. And yeah, I thought that we'd see a really nice little hike here. Even at a 25 watt TDP, we can get over 60 with this game at 900p or 1000p, given that this device is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. But at 1080 in dock mode, game like this, unless you really want to go to those very low settings, frame gen is really going to be where it's at. And that's kind of been the case with all iGPUs that I've tested with Spider-Man 2. Going into this, I really wasn't sure what to expect, and I know that AMD created the Z2 Extreme for low power handheld devices, but uh, you know, I was really hoping to get a little more out of it than we saw here at that 60 watt TDP. Now don't get me wrong, for integrated graphics, I mean, we're seeing some good performance here with the TDP jacked up on this, but it's not much more than we can get at a 35 watt TDP. And uh, you know, coming over from something like the Z1 Extreme, which is a really good handheld chip, I guess my expectations were a bit higher for the 16 compute unit RDNA 3.5 based iGPU. And of course, it's still a bit early. The Z1 Extreme has come a long way with driver support from different manufacturers. So I do believe we will see increased performance across the board with the Z2 Extreme. And I'm definitely gonna keep my eye out for new driver updates from AMD for this chip. But that's gonna wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in checking out the MSI Claw all by itself or versus the Z1 Extreme, I'll leave links to those videos in the description. Like always, thanks for watching.